Good day, everyone. So now let's discuss third part of our merchandising. So from our past uh, videos, we discussed the overview, how, how do we record our sale and uh, the purchase of merchandise? How do we account for discounts and uh, returns as well as the payment of uh, freight costs as to who will bear the uh, shipping cost. So now let's go to the accounting for credit sales. So how do we record credit sales? So kapag sinabing credit sales, that is a sales on account. So ibig sabihin, inutang yung, yung binenta natin, inutang ng customer. So we have uh, two methods in recording the credit sales. We have the gross and the net, net method. So um, dito sa gross method natin, nire-record natin yung ating accounts receivable in sales at a gross amount of the invoice. Dito naman sa net method natin, nire-record natin sila, bawas na yung discount. Kahit uh, nakapagbayad or hindi pa nakapagbayad within the discount period. So, dito tayo sa ating example. Sold 5,000 worth of merchandise on account. Terms, uh, 2 over 15. Payable in 30 days. So, our entry would be a debit account receivable and a credit to sales. Again, gross amount is 5,000 pesos. Under net method, again, bawas na yung ating 2% na discount. Therefore, debit tayo na account receivable and credit tayo ng sales. Nere-record natin sila at net amount. So, 5,000 less 2%. Nung 5,000 is 4,9. So, ibig sabihin, record natin siya at 4,9. Again, kahit hindi pa nakapagbayad, 4,9 yung record natin. So, next, what if nakapagbayad within the discount period? So, na-avail yung discount. So, magiging entry natin yan. Debit tayo ng cash. Another debit for the sales discount. And then credit for the accounts receivable. So dito is 49. Yung discount natin is 100 pesos. And then credit tayo ng accounts receivable na 5,000 pesos. Para dito naman sa uh, net method natin, again, na avail within the discount period. Sabihin nyo, marireceive natin na pera is 49. And then, credit tayo ng accounts receivable na 4,900. So, ganyan yung magiging entry natin under net method. So, magiging challenge nito, ano yung magiging entry natin kapag na-collect natin siya beyond discount period. So, ibig sabihin nun, hindi na hindi na na-avail yung discount. So, our entry would be under cross method. Debit tayo ng cash. Assumption natin, hindi, naka, hindi nakapagbayad within the discount period. So, wala account. Credit tayo ng account receivable na 5,000 pesos. Under net method naman, again, hindi na avail discount pero nabawas na kanina sa initial entry natin. So, maging entry natin dito, Debit tayo ng cash. Since hindi na avail, ibig sabihin yung dapat na bayaran ni customer is buong 5,000. And then, yung nakarecord na AR is 4,900 lang. Ibig sabihin, meron tayong sales discount forfeited. So, sa part ng seller, income yun. Sa part ni buyer, loss is 100 pesos. Yun ito yung magiging entry natin under gross and debt method. Next is the accounting for inventories. 
So, paano natin na-record yung ating inventory? So, we have two ways to record the inventories, namely the periodic system and the perpetual system. So, kailan ba natin ginagamit itong periodic and itong perpetual? So, itong periodic, ginagamit lang natin ito for small amount of peso value. So, kapag, for example, mga sari-sari store, periodic yung gamit natin na service, uh, I mean, ginagamit natin na system. Examples, yun na, uh, sari-sari store, grocery stores, hardwares, office and school supplies. So, dito din sa periodic, nagkakaroon tayo ng physical counting. Sabihin ng physical count, nagkakaroon tayo ng pagbibilang, pag inventaryo Binibilang natin ilan na yung natirang uh, inventory sa atin. So, at the end of accounting period. So, um, commonly, na ginagawa itong physical count na ito every December 31 or end of the year. So, ito yung usual na ginagamit natin. Itong periodic inventory system. Under perpetual system naman, ginagamit natin to kapag yung nabibenta natin is malalaki yung peso value. So, para ito dun sa mga malaki, malalaking company na marami yung kanilang uh, merchandise or yung uh, stocks nila. So, dito sa perpetual naman, ginagamitan ng stock cards. So, anong purpose ito stock cards? Dito malalaman, o dito nakapaloob, yung pag, uh, pagpasok at paglabas ng mga stocks. So, kahit hindi ka magkaroon ng physical count, malalaman mo kung ilan na ba o ilan na lang yung inventory mo without doing a physical count. But, this, but that does not necessarily mean na hindi na nagkakaroon ng physical count under perpetual. Nagkakaroon pa rin, pero anytime available yung information about sa inventory. And ito kasi yung main point lang nito. Magkano yung inventory end? Magkano yung inventory on end? So, again, we have two ways to record the periodic end. Uh, two ways to record inventories, the periodic and the perpetual inventory system. Sa pag-record naman, um, um, meron silang pagkakaiba, ano? Sa periodic, ang ginagamit natin na account title is purchases. Kapag nag-purchase tayo ng inventory o ng asset para ibenta. Under perpetual inventory system naman, yung ginagamit natin dito is merchandise inventory. Merchandise inventory account. So, kapag nag-entry tayo, merchandise inventory account yung ginagamit natin. So, ito na yung, again ha, purchases, yung gamit natin under periodic, under perpetual, yung ginagamit natin is merchandise inventory. Dito din sa periodic, nagamit natin yung purchase discount. Meron din tayong purchase returns and allowances. Meron din tayong tinatawag na rate in. Kung maalala nyo. So, under periodic, nakaisa-isa sila. Pero under perpetual, yung ginagamit na natin na account title is, again, merchandise inventory. Yan lahat. Kapag nakapag-avail ka ng discount, merchandise inventory. 
kapag meron kang ibinalik merchandise inventory. Kapag nagbayad ka ng freight in, yan, pakitake note, freight in lang, merchandise inventory gagamitin mo under perpetual method. So, yan. Related yan lahat sa ating purchases. Kapag ka meron naman tayong sales, ang pinagkaiba ng periodic or perpet and perpetual, ganito. Diba? Under periodic, o yung usual natin na ginagawa, debit tayo ng, for example, nakapagbenda tayo cash. Debit tayo ng cash, nagkikredit tayo ng sales. Ganyan yung entry natin. Certain amount. Under perpetual naman. Uh, under periodic, ganito lang yung entry natin. Pero under sa perpetual, dalawa yung magiging entry natin. First is the same dun sa periodic. Same yung amount. I mean, the same yung account title. And then, meron pang isang, uh, isang entry. Kasi itong amount na ito, ito yung amount ng pagbenta mo o yung tinatawag nating sales price. Sige, for example, nagbenta tayo ng ng goods. Binenta natin 10 pesos. Pero binili natin, ibig sabihin cost, binili na, natin siya ng 8 pesos. So again, kapag nag-record ka dito sa sales mo, ang ilalagay mo diyan 10. Pero, hindi mo na record yung cost. So, under periodic, ito lang. 10 pesos yung naka-record sa'yo dito. Pero, under perpetual, yung sa second entry natin, nag-debit tayo ng cost of goods sold na 8 pesos. And then, credit tayo ng merchandise inventory of 8 pesos. Para saan yan? Kasi nga, di ba, kung maalala natin, under perpetual method, gumagamit ng stock cards. So, ang nasa stock card is yung pagpasok at paglabas ng merchandise inventory natin. So, aside sa nag-record tayo ng sales ng 10 pesos, i-record din natin yung paglabas ng merchandise inventory natin. So, merchandise inventory your inventory is an asset account. So, kapag nilabas mo yan, i-credit mo in the amount of 8 pesos at cost. And then, debit tayo ng cost of goods sold. Uh, cost of goods sold is a somewhat an expense account. Pero since cost siya, hindi natin siya sinasama dun sa operating expense natin. So, again, we debit cost of goods sold. And then we credit merchandise inventory. So, yan yung pagkakaiba ng periodic and perpetual inventory system kapag nagkaroon tayo ng sale of a merchandise. So, bigyan tayo ng example. Under sa... Pag meron tayong purchases. Okay. Purchased merchandise on account from Pacific Su Supply Company for 9000 Terms 315 and 30 payment was made on the ninth day after purchase. So, dito nag-purchase tayo ng 49,000 on account. So, go not ng entry under periodic system. Yung entry natin. Debit tayo niya ng uh, purchases. Again, yung ginagamit natin is purchases account type. Then, we credit accounts payable. The amount of 49,000. So, ganyan yung magiging entry natin. Under perpetual, again, yung gagamitin natin is merchandise inventory. So, merchandise inventory. And then, we credit accounts payable. Of 49,000. Pesos. So, sana masundan.
So next, sabi sa problem, payment was made on the ninth day of ninth day after purchase. So na avail do yung na avail natin yung discount kasi nakapagbayad tayo within the discount period. So ang three percent ng forty nine thousand is oh one thousand four hundred seventy. So, magiging entry natin under periodic. Again, the usual na ginagawa natin. Debit tire ng accounts payable. 49,000. And then, credit tire ng a purchase discount. Na-avail natin yun, 1,470. And then, yung binayad natin cash is 47,000. 530. So, yun yung entry natin under periodic. Under perpetual naman, again, ang gagamitin natin in lieu of a purchase discount is the merchandise inventory. So, the same pa din, 49,000 for accounts payable. And then, yung discount natin, merchandise inventory. Yung gagamitin natin account Title, and then credit tayo ng cash. Again, take note palagi na kapag merong discount, kapag merong returns, kapag merong freight in, ang ginagamit natin under perpetual is merchandise inventory account. So next, naman is the accounting for credit purchases. The same procedure with the accounting for credit sales. It's been purchased dito, purchased on account. Ganon pa din magiging entry yung meron tayong gross and net method. So papakita pa din natin. So purchased merchandise on account. From Pacific forty nine thousand, term three fifteen and thirty. Again, you making entry natin under gross. Yung usual. Debit ay ng purchases, and then credit ay ng accounts payable forty nine thousand, and then under net method, bawas na nong. Discount, debit purchases, credit accounts payable. The amount natin is forty nine thousand. That's three percent. That is one four seventy. We have forty seven thousand five hundred thirty. Question. Kapag nagbayad within the discount period, yung magiging entry natin, debit tayo ng cash, credit tayo ng accounts. I mean, debit tayo ng accounts payable, credit tayo ng purchase discount, and credit tayo ng cash. Nagbayad tayo. So, 49,000. Yung discount natin is 1,407. And then, denied natin cash is 47,530. Under net method, since na avail, debit lang tayo ng accounts payable and credit lang tayo ng cash in the amount of 47,530. So, yan yung magiging entry natin. So, paano kung nakapagbayad tayo within the, uh, beyond the, the discount period? So, magiging entry natin, debit under gross, debit tayo ng accounts payable, 49, and then credit tayo ng cash, 49, kasi beyond the discount period na. Ito yun. Magiging entry. Under naman sa net method, since bawas na ng discount, ang mangyayari is debit tayo ng accounts payable, 47,530. 
another debit for purchase discount lost. So, again, on our part, being the buyer, loss yun. Or other expense, yung kanyang classification. So, it is 1, 4, 70, and then we credit cash of 49,000 pesos. So, yun. Yun na yung ating a discussion for the part 3 ng ating merchandise or yung ating merchandising. So, for the next video, yung i-discuss ko yung ating Closing entries, the post-closing trial balance, and the reversing entries. Thank you and God bless.